Hello, I'm Pastor Lee Eklov, and it's my pleasure to be able to teach this course, Introduction to Pastoral Care and Counseling. We're teaching this class on the island of Cyprus. This is a historic island, and uh, the Apostle Paul, on his very first missionary journey, came to Cyprus. He landed in Salamis, a town about 150 kilometers in that direction along the sea. Uh, in Salamis at that time, there was an amphitheater like this one. This is modern. We're in the town of Pasuri, but it's modeled after the ancient um, amphitheaters like the one in Salamis. He then traveled, it says, through the country of Cyprus, I imagine along the coastline. And he eventually uh, he passed right near this area and then went to the city of Paphos, which is nearby. And that's where he met the proconsul, the governor of this whole island. And he also met a Jewish sorcerer who uh, he confronted in a case of real spiritual warfare. And eventually the proconsul here, whose name was Sergius Paulus, became a believer in Jesus Christ. So I assume that there was a church established here. The church that was established here in those days, uh, almost 2,000 years ago, I am sure was not too much different than the church you attend. I have a lady in my church who is from Corinth. I say, is your church like the church in Corinth? And we read in the Bible, she says, it's not much different. Churches don't change very much. Let me tell you a little bit about my church. I pastor a church of about 200 people north of Chicago in a suburb, very comfortable suburb. Uh, it's a wonderful congregation and I've been there for nearly 20 years. I also teach a class in counseling for pastors like this one. And I'm also a writer. I write for Christian publications about preaching and pastoral care. So I'm excited about this opportunity to teach you this material. Several years ago, I was um, going to preach from Matthew 9, 35 and 36, which says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. I want to just stop on that phrase. As we were preparing for that service those years ago, we decided to take a simple survey of our congregation on Sunday morning. Everyone was giving, given a little piece of paper and it just said, one way I feel harassed and helpless in my life or in my walk with the Lord is, and people turned them in. We thought we might hear two or three main things, but actually there was, there were many different things. I want to read some of their responses to you. These are the things that people in an ordin ordinary suburban church were carrying heavy on their hearts one Sunday when they came to church. This is what they wrote. Depression, constant pressure of deadlines that are nearly impossible to meet and balancing that with being a Christian. Relationship with my husband. Harassed by a very difficult and negative workplace. Someone wrote, things have been very hard lately. I've been struggling with some deeply rooted sins that have become habitual and I feel a wandering in my heart. Someone else said, anger against discrimination. Another, our marriage needs strengthening. I feel hurt and frustrated. I feel depressed at times. Someone else, I feel it is difficult to live up to God's perfect standards. Sometimes I feel defeated, but I know that God loves me, so I'll keep trying. Another said, I feel burdened by financial debt and the enslavement to it. Pray that God will provide quick relief. Do you think God will give quick relief? Someone said, I am helpless when it comes to find time to relax. I'm a very high-strung individual, and sometimes it would be nice to just relax and live in the moment. 
another, the ever-present struggle with doubts. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. I feel bad, uh, helpless in my battle with anxiety. I'm a constant worrier and get anxious over simple situations. I struggle with feeling like I am always a disappointment. And finally, just fear. These people might be in your congregation. What would you do if they came to talk to you as a pastor about their problem? And remember, Jesus was speaking about people who were sheep without a shepherd. Your people have a shepherd. They have two, actually. They have the Lord Jesus, and they have you. You are their shepherd. And in my church, I am their shepherd. Well, let me tell you what we're going to cover in this class. As we go through this, we're going to talk about listening skills, one of the most basic skills that a pastoral counselor needs to have. We're going to talk about what Scripture says about the human condition and draw on Scripture for a lot of the ideas we talk about. We're also going to help you understand how better to use Scripture in counseling. We're going to talk about how Christian counseling interfaces with psychology, if it does, and some of the struggles that go with that. We'll talk about boundaries that you set so that you are not hurt in counseling emotionally and so that your counselee is kept safe as well. Later, we'll talk about things like spiritual warfare and uh, a number of other conditions. And then at the, uh, near the end of our class, we'll switch from counseling and talk to the, the work of the pastor, uh, how we handle worship services and how we handle uh, things like weddings and funerals and communion and baptism so that you have some practical help in doing that. We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world depends on all of us. We very much need and appreciate your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.